Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. All right, brand new week. And I've got a chore in front of me this week that I've got to figure out how to wiggle in time for amidst uh, uh, my job, <laughs> the legal work that I do and, and the other things that I've got going on. So let me give you a clue because this is going to be the theme for my video thoughts for the week. All right. I just got a copy of Baylor University Press's new uh, catalog, the uh, catalog for 2023 to 2024. And yes, on there, ah, see that? Minor Profits for Living, Daily Prayers, Wisdom, and Guidance, Mark Lanier. Uh, my book is due out before the end of the year. I think it comes out in December, uh, early to mid-December, my next book. And this book is on the minor profits. Uh, it's part of a series of, at this point, five I've done for Baylor. One on the Psalms, uh, one on, on uh, the Torah, uh, one on uh, Jesus and, and New Testament. Um, and then this is number four, I guess, uh, of the series on the minor profits. Anyway, uh, what happens when this is done is you write and then you rewrite and then you rewrite and then you rewrite. But they typeset it ultimately and then give you a chance to look at it one last time to make any minor edits or changes you might want to look at. And they've done that for me. And so I'm in that process. I've got to finish it uh, within really the next uh, week or so. And so I'm, I'm working hard at trying to read this book. Now, there's a devotional for each day of the year. So that's like 365 pages. So I'm having to, to read pretty intensely because I have to read it carefully. But it's been long enough since I wrote it to where some of the stuff I'm sitting there saying, oh, yeah, now I remember that. So here's what I thought I'd do for this week. I thought it might be a useful week for me to, to basically say, uh, here are some snippets of what you can anticipate uh, if you uh, decide you want to get the book. Um, and, and I'll have copies that I can help people get, but you can pre-order them off of Amazon or off of Baylor or wherever you might also choose to get the book. Uh, no worries, though. If you go to church with me, uh, Becky and I hope to, to give each person in class a copy. So uh, uh, for what that's worth. Um, anyway, this is a, a verse that I thought I'd pull out of the Jonah story. Now, you know the Jonah story. Jonah's uh, got a daytime job working for the king of Israel. He's a prophet. And by daytime job, I mean the king actually pays him. He's paid to give the king advice. But he got thrown a curveball because the king, by the way, was wicked, didn't have any knowledge or desire really of, of, of God, Yahweh God. And um, uh, But the king hires him anyway, kind of like a yes person, just to kind of make the king feel good about life. But God actually comes to Jonah and says, I really do have a job for you as a prophet. I've got a word I want you to take to the people of Nineveh. And Jonah doesn't want to do it. So Jonah uh, instead runs from God and runs from God's uh, assignment. And it starts early in the book. It's Jonah 1 verse 3 that I wanted to talk to you about this morning. And that's where it says, so Jonah, so Jonah what he does is instead of Going to Nineveh, which would be over land from where Jonah was, uh, Jonah runs the opposite way to the coast. And when he gets to the coast, he finds a ship going far away from where he's been told to go. And, and verse 3 says, Noah, I mean Jonah, paid the fare for the boat, went down into it to go to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. He's saying... God wants me to do this. I'm going to go as far from God as possible. He does that, and it says he paid the fare. I'm thinking, you know, it's one thing to run from God. It's another thing altogether to spend money to run from God. I mean, he not only decided to say no to God and flee from whatever God had him do, he was willing to lose money in the process. Jonah is a book that challenges me to obedience. How many times do we chase after something that's not God's will to our own detriment, at our own expense? 
And as this story unfolds, we'll begin to see that the money Jonah paid for the fare on the boat was a rounding error compared to what it was going to cost Jonah by fleeing the presence of God. More on Jonah this week, but that is your video thought for today.